All right, I've got a discount for you. We're talking Xbox Live. Loads of gaming discounts. All you have to do is go to my description, copy my code from the description, paste my code. Woof, it's gaming time. Righto, tell you there, champs, and oh yes, I've been waiting a long, long time to get one of these Alienware M series in the house. We have one. Today, we're going to be comparing the Alienware against the MacBook Pro 16. Now, when I've done all my MacBook Pro 16 reviews, I did say, which laptop do I compare it to? The 15-inch laptops or the 17-inch laptops? Well, in this case, we're comparing it to the Alienware 17M. Now, the performance between the Alienware 17M and 15M should be pretty much the same. There won't be that much difference at all. I will have the 15M in as well for testing. You can also see here, I am capturing straight into this Alienware now and you can see the DPC latency checker. I always get asked about this. So yeah, you audio guys, you're a kind bunch of folks. I will say, if you're into MacBook Pro 16 and you want to know how it performs for music production, I'll leave a link in the description to John Sin's test of the 16 inch MacBook Pro, who is a music producer. Check out that video. So I've been waiting a really long time for the Alienware M series and I I gotta say on the most part it has not disappointed so far we'll get into gaming later it is an amazing beautiful laptop so is the macbook pro these are both premium things and i wanted to test these before i done my laptop of the year sort of you know video so stay tuned for that anyway let's talk about the specs and get into the tests in content creation now the fan has actually just come on on the alienware just to note that if you can hear it or not i doubt it it's very low this alienware 17m comes with an RTX 2080 Max-Q i7-9750H. So it doesn't have the i9. and will be comparing it to the MacBook Pro with the i9, i7, and even the XPS 15 here and there. Also comparing it to both MacBook Pro's graphics cards. So the 4GB 5300 and 8GB 5500. This Alienware also comes with 16GB of RAM. If you're struggling to get 16-inch to fit, yeah, 17-inch. Oh, it is friggin' epic, this display, I'll tell you what. And yeah, you wouldn't think that this only wears a 17 inch laptop for how thin it is and how easy it is to handle for a 17 inch. It's quite amazing. And that goes for the MacBook Pro too. It's like, you know, lighter and thinner than every sort of 15 inch and it's a 16 inch. Now you would think on specs on paper, if we're talking about the GPU, this Alienware is just going to destroy. And yeah, on the left is the Alienware, on the right is the MacBook Pro or whatever I'm comparing it to at the time. And yes, you'll see that it does absolutely destroy the 5500 in, you know, gaming sort of benchmarks. I mean, it is literally double the score there. Not only the, you know, the final score of 13,000, and by the way, the i9 in the MacBook Pro, so that boosts the overall score. But just look at the graphic score. You can see here the graphic score, 20,000 versus, you know, 10,000. You know, it's literally double. So you would think, all right, so for gaming, it destroys it. But it's not like that for content creation, if you don't know. I am using the studio drivers in this Alienware. So that is one thing to note. So the first thing I want to check is 3D. You would expect the Alienware RTX 2080, it's just going to kill it. But it's not that simple, right? As you can see on the top line there, 3D Studio Max, and of course the Alienware is on the left. What I'm comparing it to on the right is the i9 MacBook Pro 16 with the 8 gigabytes Radeon Pro 5500. And as you can see, all right, so 3D Studio Max, which is always good for Nvidia cards. Yeah, all right, it does beat it. But go have a look at the bottom and we go to SolidWorks, okay? So SolidWorks is at the bottom and you'll see there that the MacBook Pro is quite a bit faster than the Alienware. Now that is all down to drivers. You can use the professional drivers with the Radeon Pro on the MacBook Pro. I am using studio drivers, so that should give it a bit of a boost, but they're not quadro drivers. So you're not gonna get always the performance gains that you would if you had a quadro card. And even a less powerful Quadro card would probably benchmark better on this. But yeah, you can take a screenshot of this. Um, some other things that stand out, I mean, have a look at SNX. SNX on the MacBook Pro, how much faster it is than on the Alienware. Like, wow. And that's just because of drivers. It really is just because of drivers. But you can see there, Maya, Maya and 3D Studio Max. Yes, the RTX 2080 of the Alienware does kill it there. So, you know, whichever one you want to use, you at least got a benchmark to go by here. So if we have a look at exporting raw files in Lightroom to JPEGs, and you can see here that the Alienware, yeah, all right, 
because it has the i7, it's not going to top the charts here. Obviously, the i9 is up the top, the top in the charts, and that's just basically a CPU test at that point. You know, if you had the i9 in the Alienware, it would be more along the lines of the MacBook Pro 16 and the XPS 15 that have the i9 in this case. And yeah, it still does pretty well. It's faster than the Razer there. So, and by the way, that Razer was the eighth generation, but you know, there's not that much difference between the eighth and the ninth unless you have the eight cores. And now we get into Lightroom, of course, the Alienware on the left and the i9 MacBook Pro 16 on the right. And as you can see, they're much bigger score for the i9 of the MacBook Pro 16. This is expected. It does scale with CPU cores, but if we have a look at GPU score, look at that, 81 versus 62. And that's got an RTX 2080 on the Alienware. It really does like Radeon cards. In actual fact, the fastest graphics card for Photoshop is the Radeon 7. Like Radeon or AMD graphics, they're just the best for Photoshop. That's just how it is. Let's compare it to an i7 MacBook Pro and you can see there the MacBook Pro is still faster and still faster graphics even though it's got the lower end graphics in that MacBook Pro i7, the 5300. That's because, yeah, again, AMD, kill it with Photoshop. So if you want a Photoshop beast, uh, the MacBook Pros are the best for Photoshop without a doubt. And yeah, for Lightroom pretty much, you know, it goes with CPU cores. They're pretty even, but I think to wrap up photography, the Macs, they're just really good for that. Adobe, come on, let's put some uh, optimizations for the PCs. Now let's have a look at video editing, and this is very interesting, okay? Because we have on the left, of course, the Alienware, which is the i7 RTX 2080 versus the i9 of the MacBook Pro with the AMD 5500. Now, before I said AMD loves Photoshop and stuff like that, well, when it comes to Premiere, if you encompass everything so we're talking about export scores live playback and gpu and cpu effects and that's the best thing about this puget system benchmark all right it is a benchmark but it does real world stuff it's much better than doing multiple tests across many suites because this test playback it tests export scores cpu export gpu export it tests h.265 h.264 red footage it tests all these sort of things, go to Pugin System, just type in Premiere Pro Benchmark, you'll be able to get it for yourself. This is very interesting because that's an i7 on the Alienware and it's nearly the same score as the i9 MacBook Pro. Now the MacBook Pro does have a slight advantage in the playback score, that's to be expected. It has eight cores. If you had the i9 in the Alienware, that playback score would probably be around the same sort of score as the MacBook Pro. And then it would probably have an overall higher score because its export scores are higher. Now, where this picks up some points, the Alienware is GPU heavy effects. So if you're exporting and it's using the GPU or just GPU effects in general, like in the timeline, you might you know put an effect on that's GPU accelerated. That's where the Alienware is going to kill it. That's why it gets, even with an i7, the same sort of score as a MacBook Pro with an i9. That being said... They are both really good in the timeline. They're both great. But if I just go here to the i7 MacBook Pro with the less graphics, the 5300 graphics, you can see there it loses quite a bit in the export score because it doesn't have those two cores. Also, the graphics not being quite as powerful as the 5500. So it shows you how good this Alienware is that it beats the i7 of the MacBook Pro 16, keeps up with the MacBook Pro 16 i9, not quite in playback, but this is an i7. Put an i9 in it, it would probably be the same, if not a little bit better. So that's where the power of the RTX graphics comes in. And that's great. I mean, it should be faster than the MacBook Pro with an RTX 2080, but how good are the MacBook Pros in one sense that, you know, they have a graphics card that's literally, you know, less than half the speed in sort of gaming terms, but it's still keeping up with PCs with RTX 2080. So it depends which way you look at it. Both of them are great for video editing. I really like this Alienware, but... So far, you can only get it with 16 gigs. That is a bit of an issue. So for my last test here, this is the test. I test every single laptop that comes in here, my 4K sample project. Now I'm using Adobe 2020. That's why it's got that sort of line there. Anything below that used Adobe 2019. Yeah, Adobe 2020 slower so far. But anyway, 
what we can see here, this is exporting H.264 with color correction, high resolution photos. This is just exporting with hardware encoding, which is the brackets, and then software encoding, which is the score on the right, the time on the right. Now, most people are going to be doing hardware encoding. So if you have a look at hardware encoding, you look at the Alienware, all right, for software encoding, because that i7, you know, it doesn't peak hard and it's not overclocked. This is stock. We will get to overclocking in another video for gaming and stuff. But yeah, so it's on the bottom of the pack there, eight minutes versus six minutes. They max on metal. That's amazing that they do that with software encoding. That's really fast. But if we go to hardware encoding, you can see it's pretty much a match for the 16 inch MacBook Pro. And as you can see there, three minutes 43 versus three minutes 38. Now, hardware encoding doesn't just use the Intel H HD, it does use the graphics as well. That's why it's getting that nice speed bump and they've been a bit faster than the XPS 15 because it has the RTX 2080. That being said, I mean, it's an RTX 2080, you would expect even faster scores again. And you know what the fastest rendering machine is with this project? I kid you not. And it's faster than every single desktop I've had. It's the XPS 13 2-in-1 with an eGPU with a Radeon 7 eGPU, that does it in like 2 minutes 38, I think, hardware encoding. That's faster than, you know, a 16-core Threadripper. It's faster than 9900K of a 2080 Ti. Don't know what's going on there. I think that's the Ice Lake sort of, you know, integrated graphics just being super fast for the hardware encoding. But um, yeah, anyway, as you can see there, it competes with the MacBook Pro easily with hardware encoding, but still those Macs kill it for the software encoding. If you have a look below the line, you can see there those two laptops where I could just pump so many watts into them, the super speed I could get on those ones, undervolted and overclocked. Like, I mean, that Aero 17, I could pump 100 watts into that CPU, no problems. Uh, yeah, that thing's amazing. So Anyway, that's my content creation review, Alienware versus MacBook Pro 16. Make sure you stay tuned for more content. I'm going to do the gamer review on the Alienware very soon. I will tell you that I am actually on my fourth MacBook Pro. Yes, fourth. Uh, I'm going to talk about the issues, why you might not want to buy the MacBook Pro 16. You know, a video maybe this week will come out, hopefully. Um, so stay tuned for that. Anyway, catch you next one, guys. Tally ho.